The main question posed by this week's Smackdown was why? Why did Bray Wyatt attack Alexa Bliss? Why wasn't Braun Strowman there? Why did Sonya Deville take out the hair of Mandy Rose? Why Chad Gable? Why? I'm Tom Collihue and in today's Smackdown review I'm going to try and answer those questions. Smackdown opened with the same video package that they have done for the last couple of weeks and this really sets the tone, lets you know what matches are going to be there without doing the full rundown that Raw has been doing. This in my opinion is a good thing. For one thing it gave us a shot of Bray Wyatt and it also gave us real information as to what Naomi, Big E and so on were likely to do this week. That's good to engage attention. While I think at this point we all know that The Fiend vs Braun Strowman is the Universal Championship match at SummerSlam, we do still have a story to tell to get there and this week they made good headway in making that interesting. We opened with our Intercontinental Championship match organised last week between defending champion AJ Styles and Grand Metalik of the Lucha House Party. This is part of a very short term feud, I did mention I only expected this to be a one week push because the Lucha House Party are pretty much essential right now in the Smackdown Tag Team title picture because there's no one else. AJ Styles won clean and handily and in addition, just in case you thought he might be anything less than a massive heel, he attacked Lince Dorado afterwards. There will be no repercussions for these actions. In a backstage segment, Chad Gable is approached by former heated rival Baron Corbin who apparently is trying to GM tonight and organise Chad Gable versus Matt Riddle. I find it hard to be negative on Corbin when he may be given us a match that's going to be that good. He gets in Chad Gable's head, in fact calls him Chad repeatedly which is unusual on WWE programming which will pay off later in the night. If you want more information on what's going on with Chad Gable please do subscribe to this channel, there will be more news coming later in the week. Jeff Hardy makes his entrance to the ring, there is no appearance from Sheamus here at least in this segment which is very refreshing. Speaking of refreshing they show a recap package beforehand where Jeff Hardy is flushed down a toilet. We're going to see a lot of that. Jeff Hardy has apparently moved on but it's difficult to say what to unless it is of course The Fiend as The Fiend will need new challenges after Summerslam. Hardy is interrupted by Baron Corbin who complains for a long time against Matt Riddle and then somehow as an end result of this we get Baron Corbin vs Drew Gulak. It's a high quality match, Matt Riddle attempts to distract Baron Corbin by making his entrance however Drew Gulak is unable to capitalise, eats the end of days and takes the pin. Not the best showing from Drew Gulak but still a good showing in terms of the actual match itself. Immediately afterwards Matt Riddle attacks Baron Corbin and Corbin is protected by Chad Gable who may or may not be a heel going forwards. Kayfabe reasoning for this is that Chad Gable who hasn't had many chances recently is trying to collect a king's ransom that Baron Corbin has laid out for him which essentially means he'll get money but in a non-Kayfabe sense it is a way to get Chad Gable into a feud, get him some TV time and get that Chad Gable Matt Riddle match that we are actually quite excited about. Baron Corbin apparently has been pushing for more opportunities for people and this is one of the ways that Vince McMahon believes that they can push new stars. Chad Gable is someone he wants to push purely because of his in-ring wrestling talent. Apparently he sees a lot of Kurt Angle in Chad Gable. Straddling the first and second hour we have Big E against The Miz and this segment really stands alone and will likely stand the test of time. The Miz is a perfect foil here, John Morrison is able to try and cheat to win for The Miz on several occasions, however Big E is able to kick out of the skull crushing finale, he's able to rally, show his strength and take the win despite the odds being against him. This is a very good look for Big E and I hope it continues for a long time. Big E is a very popular name backstage and while he's not a new star he is someone that management have had their eye on for a while. Vince has apparently had his ear chewed off repeatedly about the idea of pushing Big E and the New Day given major sway backstage despite not being available at the moment their one representative is available and all three members are apparently very excited to take this opportunity. Sheamus cuts a promo backstage still dressed in his bar fight gear because this was of course filmed before the bar fight happened 
where he essentially says that he has moved on from Jeff Hardy. The original plan for this feud was for Sheamus not to be the one who caused the car crash, which originally got Jeff Hardy into the trouble to begin with. He was there simply to have a feud, and when he eventually won the feud, they would then move on from Jeff Hardy to someone else. Jeff Hardy was supposed to be feuding with Sami Zayn. That moment has not come because Sami Zayn is still not in work. We had a very brief match between Naomi and Lacey Evans. Lacey once again attempts to tie Naomi's hair to the ropes. However, Naomi at this point at least realizes that her hair is not tied to anything and is able to get the win with an unconvincing roll up. I'd like to see a more convincing win. WWE clearly are trying to keep Naomi looking strong, but at the same time trying to maintain the heel push for Lacey Evans. Evans will be moving on to feud of more people, people we should be keeping an eye on, and Nikki Cross, and of course, Mandy Rose. Speaking of Mandy Rose, we have a brief backstage segment between Mandy Rose and Otis, where Rose essentially describes a very sexy cake. There's no joke there, that is literally what happens. Sonya Deville lurking in the background with Disney villain energy, eventually does sneak up on Mandy Rose while Mandy is getting her makeup done, ready to go on a date with Otis. Sonya attacks from behind, ruins Mandy's makeup, cuts a lot of Mandy's hair, and I've got to say, this was a very uncomfortable segment, very powerful for both women involved, a firm beating for Mandy Rose, and a very strong look for Sonya Deville. Hair versus hair is rumoured, but it is more likely to be for payback, the pay-per-view taking place one week after SummerSlam, than SummerSlam itself. Payback is apparently going to be a little bit of a dumping ground for matches they can't fit onto the SummerSlam card. Our main event for SmackDown is Bayley against Nikki Cross, and neither of these women are the story of this match, despite the match being, I thought, very good. After the match, when Bayley has conclusively beaten Nikki Cross, Nikki loses her temper a little and throws Alexa Bliss to the ground. Alexa Bliss, now abandoned in the ring, is attacked by The Fiend. The idea here is that The Fiend is calling out Braun Strowman and is doing so by attacking someone that Braun Strowman has very strong feelings towards. I can't necessarily say that they're romantic feelings, but they definitely have a very close relationship and this is a good way to try and bring Braun back. Now Braun Strowman has not been on TV for a number of weeks, he's had a little bit of time off. The match in the Swamp Fight was of course pre-recorded, which gave Braun a little bit of time to take some time away. One thing worth noting though, is that Bray Wyatt is now back at the Performance Center after I believe two months away. I did tweet about this teasing that people should keep an eye on Alexa Bliss. A lot of people took this as suggesting that there would be a heel turn. However, about 20 minutes into the show, I did get word about the angle that was going to be taking place. So I wanted to be as ambiguous as possible. I don't like spoiling shows, however, I did enjoy playing with people a little bit on this one. I'm a big fan of Alexa Bliss, I'm a big fan of Bray Wyatt, and I think this really piqued my interest in where they can go with this one next, because Alexa Bliss could go in a lot of different directions. The show ended with that, and I believe that as well as the high quality of wrestling and the storyline progression for a lot of different people pushed this SmackDown into a very positive category. My Twitter poll for the show gave it a 43% great rating and a 41% good rating. That is an overwhelming positive for a SmackDown that has not been hitting the heights recently. While there were backstage and recap segments, they were brief compared to what happened on Raw, and there was a lot of storyline progression. A lot of this comes back to people who are now available who weren't previously. Sheamus is only recently available. The Jeff Hardy and Sheamus feud is not at the forefront of our attention anymore, which put a downer on a lot of SmackDown shows previously. And Naomi got the win. Big E had a big moment. AJ Styles and Grand Metalik had a great match. And I'm interested to see what happens next, firstly with Chad Gable and then with Alexa Bliss. Let me know what you thought of this week's SmackDown down in the comments. I have been Tom Collihue and I'd like to thank you very much for joining me.